I think most people um, think that I probably fish full time, but for probably the last 12 to 13 years, I would have said that I'm, I'm packing up at half seven. There's definitely been times uh, where I've, you know, I've had fish feeding, um, and for whatever reason, instead of just ringing up and just saying I'm going to be an hour late or something, I've I've been quite regimental by it and still got in the car and gone to work but there's definitely been times where I would have liked to stay on and probably a, another bite would have occurred or something definitely would have happened. I think most lakes, I think a lot of the lakes that I've chosen to fish anyway, certainly in the last 10 years, you know, if you had a bit more time they probably would be able to be sort of unlocked if you like um, a lot easier. Some people think you're crazy sort of taking on the challenge of catching you know one one fish in 100 acres but to me you know that just spurs me on it it makes me you know want to to, to fish the lake and, and and to try and achieve it on that type of a scale my angling's changed um, considerably in the last 12 years you know with the way that my work and fishing and um, I think a lot of the time you, you know you're, you're always trying to create something so whether or not it's sight you know sight fishing find the fish fish for them um, or get the bait to work for you as well and because um, I do a lot of sort of baiting up and sort of prep work and there's a lot of that that goes into it and so when I'm not at the lake you know quite a bit of the time I, I feel that the way that I angle that my my baiting up and, and the food that's out there even with my rods not in the water I feel that that is massively contributing to the way that I fish I, su I suppose sometimes you can get yourself you know, into a bit of a downer, like when you're watching other anglers staying around for two or three days at a time and, you know, catching fish and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, when you've done it for such a long time, I think it all just sort of boils down to experience in the end. And you know that it works on most places that you take it. And it might take you a bit longer and you might not catch as many as some of those other anglers, but ultimately that way and that style seems to work for me. Don't get me wrong, some, sometimes it can be really difficult to, you know, tear yourself away from the lake, but, you know, most of the time, you know, if it hasn't happened in that time period that I've been there, then the fish aren't there or something's just not right. And it's nice to step out of that bubble, go to work, um, get on with my normal stuff, and then I can think about you know, where I'm going to go, if I'm going to go back that night, or if I'm just going to let my bait fish for me that night. Well, ever, ever since um, we started thinking at the time, there was only a couple of us here. And, um, and so when I fell into that trap of fishing just the nights and then coming back into work, uh, it, it's mega important to me to be able to sort of get some bait out and, you know, and keep it going. I use boilies, I use pellets, um, but I've used seed a lot, especially in the summertime, um, especially after they spawn. There's a time where they sort of really, really do like the seed. When you're on a short time scale, you, if you haven't got anything going for you, you're just going through the motions. It's, it's not real. And, and for me, I, I, need, I need to think, when you take on some big challenges, you know, and some of them are massive challenges, you know, everything's got to be right. So if that's down to your prep, that's down to your baiting every three days, um, and even just walking around the lake every three days, it's massively important to me. And it's something that if I didn't, doing my own angling um, and didn't achieve that every three days I feel like I'm just sort of I'm not fishing properly it, it's so ingrained in, in me now that I like to keep everything topped up the closer in spots are a lot easier to get away with and keep them topped up whereas if you're spawning or you know you, it's a lot you know it's a, it, a lot more people are going to see that so for me you know it is a must it's a must I, I, I need to I need to do that 
one thing you would notice um, if you were to pop into thinking is that that Burko really does get a good run for its money. Um, it's, it, it, it's pretty much going, so, well, I'd say once every two days minimum, and, and that's because I, 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 I put the particle on soak, depending on what I'm doing, and then the next day I'm boiling the particle, and then on the third day, which is like I said, that you know it's that third day that I like to get the bait in, um, I'm, I'm, I'm running it in the van up to the lake, and, and then obviously I'm sticking it on the wheelbarrow and I'm, I'm moving around the lake and just keeping every single area topped up. The two particles that I use the most um, by far are hemp seed and maples. There's lots of other good seeds out there, there's loads, um, but those two have, they've been in my mix for the best part of 10 years now. And um, there's not really been too many lakes that the fish don't like them in. Um, all fish like seed and you know, at the right time of year, it, it can be devastating. They're very easy to prepare, both of them to be honest. A hemp seed, I just give it a good 24 hour soak um, and then I bring it up to the boil in the burko. Try not to boil it for too, too long, just bring it, rev it up and then I tend to leave the burko lid on and then put something over the two air holes on the top so it almost pressure cooks it. Uh, then the next day you go back to it, so leave it another 12 hours, go back to it, take the lid off and you get that sweet smell of hemp and you know, it's split well. Maples. A very similar one is again really I mean again it's you know you could probably get away with a, sh a bit of a shorter soak on them but I tend to do 24 hours I like to a few little bubbles going on in in the in the bucket of water that they're in and then once I see that then obviously I flip them into the burko I give them a good rev up and then I put them in a bucket and one thing I believe is quite important is I like to seal the lid so again it sort of pressure cooks them again and by the next day, sometimes you can go back and it's, you know, it's even got jelly in there sort of thing. And you know that, you know, that, that particular seed or, you know, like in the maples case, um, they're ready. Um, two very good particles that I've used for a, a serious amount of time now, amongst other bait with that. Um, and then I tend to put like uh, my hook bait, I'm, you know, over the top would be tiger, like a balanced tiger. Um, I fish two on their own on the deck you know, as a bit of a weighty bait. Um, but if they're a bit tricky, I like to fish them a bit balanced. Like I say, tricky the fish. If they're cute on the bottom or if they're a bit sort of like a slug um, and don't move around a lot, I, yeah, sharp hook and a, and a balanced tiger is the one for, for me. So obviously in them two mixes with the maples and the hemp, what is important is that when you do put, a, you, you know, both of those mixes out and I put them 50-50 together, it's not like I just put a little pinch of hemp and you know, and then more maples, you know, I have a bucket of each and then I split them up into about four little buckets and then they go around the lake. But what is important is, is if you are using a tiger nut hook bait that you just drop in 10 tigers on your spot. You can do that afterwards, it doesn't need to be in the bucket. You can just ping them around the spot um, because obviously you're gonna use that as a hook bait. So you want them to be finding a few tigers too. So that's the, the bulk ingredients, the maple and the hemp seed, they are with me, you know, all through the summer. But when I come to actually fish, the boilies and the pellets play a massive part too. But one real big edge for me is um, liquidizing my boilies, uh, which I've spoken about in the past. Not only does it create a cloud and a scent in the water, but it really does get the fish going.
Okay, so my go-to rig for 95% of my edge fishing is uh, it's what's tried and tested. I've used it for well, as long as I can remember now. Um, it's quite important to stress the fact that it's all very, very simple to tie, but everything has got a strength element to it. Um, I've got about four and a half, five foot of lead core. Um, there's a reason for that, and that's because when you're fishing close to snags or anything snaggy on the bottom, there could be mussels. Um, in this lake in particular, there's lots of crays um, and sharp objects. So I've got 45 pound lead core on that. Moving down, I've got a three ounce flat inline pair. I find the shape of these to be really good. Um, I don't want them rolling down. I mean, if you think of like sort of the contours of the lakes, you know, when you're fishing sort of on slopes um, or even depressions, you want your lead to stay where you put it. You don't want it rolling down and then that in turn sort of tangles your rig up. You want everything to be precise. So with the flat sided lead, it tends to stay where you put it. Then we go down. I've got no ring on the swivel at all. This is just a standard size eight swivel. That's butted up inside the inline lead. I've left the hard insert inside. It clicks into place. And then we come down to the hook length itself. Um, I've used this for about eight or nine years, really, this hook length, I absolutely love it. I love the color. I know it's got no flex or anything to it or any camouflage to it, but it's a great color for underneath the water. I mean, most of the stuff underwater is this color. It's like a dark gray, sort of, it's not, I wouldn't call it black, it's like a dark gray color. Um, I've done basically a figure of eight loop. There's two reasons for this. I, I like sort of a two inch sort of like boom, if you like. Um, I find that that helps, especially if I'm using foam and I'm dropping with my scoop. I find that this helps sort of kick the rig out with the foam once the foam's dissolved. But also, it's also very easy to sort of loop to loop on um, and you can pass your baits through it very simple and if you were to use a little bag or something like that it's very easy just to pass the bag back up through the loop itself make sure the, the knot's nicely buttered down and you you pull this the, the cut end as well you know with your teeth don't you know don't just pull one in pull both of them use a bit of saliva get that knot really nicely bedded down there's no breaks at all by where the knot is which is important because this is going to act as your boom and then i would say the length of it is probably about about eight inches. Um, I've tried them shorter, and when there's a lot of tension in the swim, the shorter the hook length, you hook the tension too quickly. But the longer the, the hook length, it seems to be about, you know, over the years, it seems to be about the right length, is about, about eight inches. Moving up right to the hook now. I used to use, like, um, used to tie a little stop knot on there, and then I used to mold a tiny bit of putty around that stop knot, and it's, it's got like, I don't know, not even five mil break of braid between the putty, but in this case, I'm using a tungsten dropper now. Um, and they're exactly the right shape of putty that I used to mold round that little tiny sort of power gum stop knot. Um, absolutely perfect. One thing I will say is obviously with that braid, the little, the loose bit of braid here section be between that and the shrink tubing, it's quite nice to either get it in hot water or just move it around a lot. Sometimes there's like a bit of a waxy film to it, but if you just move it around, it starts to break the fibers up and it makes it just that little bit more, you know, flexible. And then we go down to the hook part, if you like, and it's very simple, like I say, but I've got a tiny bit of um, shrink tube as a, as a kicker. With the sort of um, straight pointed and the straight eye hook, I tend to have a bit more of a kicker here and it just helps the hook turn over really nicely. And then moving round the bend of the hook itself, I've got about five mil of silicon um, and that comes right the way round, you know, almost, you know, sort of well past the bend there sort of thing. But this, what I want to make a point of saying is that these two, these are actually fake rubber tigers because of the crayfish in this lake. But what I want to you know, stress the fact is that they're not buoyant. So if I was using real tigers and there was no cork or foam inside these tigers, um, so basically you're fishing as a bottom bait, there's weight there. 
I'd have my tubing there. If I was corking it and I was using, you know, a traditional tiger and it was corked and it was balanced, that bit of silicon would be much further round so it gives it more flexibility because the bait's balanced. But with the weight of this, I like to have the silicon round here. And this, you know, I've got a double tiger on there. That could be two real tigers. Or in this case, like I say, you know, they're, they're, they're two bottom bait sort of imitation tigers. I always have a little, I don't know why, maybe it's luck or something in my head, but I always have a little tiny, you know, red uh, boily stop underneath the bottom of the tigers. I've always done quite well with that. And, and for, so ever since then, I've, I've always had red, but you could use yellow, black, clear. I think, you know, I think that's just a, a more of a personal thing. One thing that you will see with the rig itself is, you know, just the nature of it. If you put it on your hands and you just twist straight away, the hook is going home and the hook's in, you know, it, it, it just flips. No matter what angle you come from, it flips, you know. I know in a fishing situation with a fish sucking in and out, it might be different, but as long as it twists like that on my hand very easily, um, it's good to go and it's, it's never, never really let me down. And that is, that is definitely my go-to rig for fishing in the edge. Big moon the other day, and uh, I've come to an area where I've been prepping for quite some time now, to be honest. And uh, it's all come good this morning. With a bite about five o'clock. This nice 36 pounder. Well chuffed with him. Good little start. Made up with that. Absolutely made up with that. Excellent. Nice, it's always nice to see them go back. This one's in good nick. Nice clean mouth on him. Can go back and fight another day. See you later. 